So here at the SID Display Week 2019, and uh, hi, so who are you? Hello, I'm Pavel Malinowski from iMac, and uh, working together with, uh, with Hilke. With I'm a Hilke command from Mall Center. And uh, you just got the prize, that means you're the best? Apparently. <laughs> now we are really, really happy for this uh, appreciation, and um, that's that's what we we did here. So we have the, the transparent fingerprint scanner, um, and uh, this is building up on on what we were showing last year at, at the iZone, where we we're already showing uh, optical fingerprint scanners based on. You can touch. So it's a it's a fingerprint scanner right here, transparent, fully transparent. Yeah. How does so it, work? it looks like a piece of glass. Uh, so you can you can see see through, um, and uh, it works kind of like a little bit of magic that you have an empty piece of glass, but actually you put objects on and you see them in the in the screen there. What? It's a scanner. It's a scanner. It's a scanner. So you can you can put your finger and it's it's it scans your finger. Uh, can you bring this a little bit closer? Can you have it here? Well, Is it fragile? Or just have it behind. So, so I can see is. when you touch. Yeah. So when you touch. The, the fingerprint appears there. You can also do it with, with documents, so you can scan a business card. So you're going to be scanning business cards on your phone screen? For example, you can also think about having a, a full, just transparent slab of, of glass indoors or on a desk, uh, and you can scan the passport and four fingers with the same device. Is this, is this uh, workable for the smartphone business? Yes, sure. This is, this does is it take away target. some visibility or something? It, it does a little bit. So the one that we show here is around uh, 70 to 80 percent transparent. If you go to higher resolution, you can still maintain at 500 ppi. You can still maintain uh, 50 per, 50 percent transparency, more or less. Um, and we work on different solutions at the whole center for uh, the integration into displays. So uh, one option is to have it underneath the display. Uh, we have a presentation on that tomorrow. The other one is in the display that uh, Pavel is presenting on tomorrow. And this is the option that we have more for the lower end displays like LCDs, for example, in automotive or ATMs, uh, where the uh, display appearance is uh, less critical. And then you can put it in front of a display and still get the biometric and touch functionality by means of optics. Um, so, is there any chance you could get to like a dream scenario where it gets to 95% transparency or something like that? Or yeah, so so for this demonstrator, we uh, did some safe choices in the technology. So, in terms of uh, like the gate line width, uh, those kind of things, and also the pixel dimensions. So, for sure, we can get to higher transparencies if we make the pixel even a little bit less uh, less big. But also, uh, you can replace the metal lines that we have by, uh, for example, transparent uh, conductive lines. So, uh, can you share a little bit more? Like, um, so you, you can scan the whole hand. Yeah. So yes, you can you can put the, the whole hand. So you can use it as a fingerprint scanner. But in principle, yeah. this can also work um, as a touch panel replacement because it can detect where you are touching. Yeah. Uh, you can you can work with with gestures. So it, it oh, can gesture. track your. How far from the screen does it work? Depends on the light conditions and on the on the application. So I think the whole point here is that uh, you have a very sensitive uh, photodiode uh, that can be also patterned into very small uh, form factors, so very small footprint. You can scale down the, the TFTs and the lines, uh, and then it's all about integrating it. How do you integrate it in the display? So in this case, you have the light coming from all directions. And then you can you can put it anywhere in the screen. Um, it scans details from the card. Excuse it doesn't me? scan the whole card like in full color or something. What does it scan? You can, so this scans, uh, this is a broadband detector, so uh, it doesn't distinguish the colors, but uh, you have uh, a lot of gray levels because uh, we are using also very high dynamic range uh, photo detectors here. Um, and the readout electronics, uh, so here you can distinguish quite a lot of detail. And depending on what you want to do with, with such a scanner, it can be used at lower resolution or higher resolution even for payments. So, so let's stand up for a second. So uh, what's next? Uh, how do you get to this kind of stuff and what are you planning to do? So this is, uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. This is our, our previous prototype uh, where we used also lithography, organic lithography to, to pattern OLEDs. 
uh, and we made 1,250 ppi display. And uh, you see here detail of this scanner. So we have a very small TFT and a very small OPD island. And in the next uh, stage, we want to have the uh, OLED pixels, so RGB OLED pixels with additional light sensor pixel in between. So we have some first steps uh, made for that. And the idea is to have really one panel with uh, light scanning uh, functionality inside this panel. So that's for the OLED world? That's for OLED. For LCD, we have some other solutions for uh, for integration of, of such scanners. Yeah. How do you integrate an LCD? Top so, so, no, <laughs> no, no, not top secret. So one of the, one of the options is this one, right? Very transparent uh, on top of uh, of the display. Uh, another option that I will present also tomorrow in in the presentation is that we really integrate it in the stack of the LCD. So on top of the backlight, but underneath the whole TFT backplane. And uh, then we also managed to get a readout uh, properly uh, to get high resolution fingerprint and still you require uh, optimizations to, uh, to be made. Yeah. So uh, how big is this going to be compared to the other uh, through display fingerprint technologies out there? All of this is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, um, they, the other fingerprint sensors that are shipping are doing some other, other ways, right? Yes, you have, you know, there, there is space for, for a lot of the different solutions. So if you want to have this solely for, uh, let's say, border control, you can think about having this, this piece of glass integrated in, for example, in the desk of the, of the officer at the border, and you can use the same device for scanning all the hand and the palm and the fingers and the passport and the visa. Mm. Uh, if, you are, if you are talking about the integration into smartphone, we are talking about having the fingerprint scanning all over the display area, so your full display becomes a scanner. Uh, if we are talking about uh, monitors, uh, you can have a basic touch functionality uh, with scanning documents and still having it in front of the display, so you can, depending on the interface, you can uh, point where to put the finger to, for example, make payments. So and the, the, and the, and the, the basic technology blocks uh, that we show here it's not only for in front of display, but you can also use it underneath the display and then at a much larger uh, dimensions than currently is possible for under display fingerprint sensing, right? So that's all the solutions out there right now is for one location only. And uh, what we propose to do is to do it over the full display area. Is it easy to put it in between every OLED pixel? It's not easy, but that's, that's why we do that. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really the integration in the panel. So you have one panel, which is both uh, the display and the scanner. And then even if you if you manage to make the uh, the front plane, so you have the OLED pixels and the OPD pixels, you still have to think how do you drive the back plane because then your one TFT back plane has to read out the signals and also drive the the display. So that's that there are other challenges next to it. What are the people saying when they say they want to put a camera on the screen? Are they lying? <laughs> or is it related to what you're doing? Is it possible? I, I think is it just an algorithm of what you're doing and it's a camera or something? No, this is, you can call it as a lensless camera because this is really a, a scanner. If we are talking about uh, selfie cameras, this is a whole other challenge. Uh, so the integration behind display of anything, it's, it's a big challenge because modern displays have almost no transparency or some of them zero transparency. So you always have to provide space for the light to go through. How are they going to do? There's no way, right? We're going to show it next year at ISD. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just put a camera in between, behind the thing, the same thing? Well, the camera is, is difficult because you, uh, you always need to work with lenses, so the, the lens systems are pretty complicated. Uh, so there are some ideas how to make it uh, behind the display backplane, uh, but this is optically, this is a very difficult situation. Cool, but you like difficult challenges, and every year you yes, come with uh, some crazy stuff? That's yes. why we exist. Are, are you a huge team? <laughs> Uh, if we if we compare to to some R and D industrial yeah. teams uh, uh, in the industry, we are pretty small, but we are talking rather about tens of people than hundreds of people. Yeah. And what what do you need to get to the next level? Because now you, you got the best prototype award. That means all the billionaires are coming, and they're gonna say. How well, we are we are always uh, working uh, with with companies, so with industry. We want to be close to the industry. Uh, and we always rely on, on collaborations with, with industrial partners. 
Um, so we, we always do it with partners. Um, Everywhere, in Asia, and US, wherever. Yes, we are, we are very flexible in, in how we work with partners. So different companies need different things. So sometimes if we work with material partners, they want to test their material in such a prototype. Some companies want to take this technology to production. Some want to have a new prototype to to, to show a new technology. So it's and, and of course we're still on the lookout also for the companies uh, who are interested in taking this technology to mass production. And then once you want to get it to mass production, is another whole challenge, right? And yes, a whole bunch of, of other things you might be doing for that. Yes, but we've done that. We've it. done the tools on on different technology modules. So. Uh, we've helped uh, companies to, to bring it to production on to, to their fabs. So we typically work with, uh, with companies in the, in the way that uh, they send also residents or industrial residents to our facilities. So they become part of our team, uh, which makes it much easier and much more efficient. They become like official spies. We wouldn't call them that way, ever. <laughs> okay, cool. No. I'm just joking, sorry. Uh, team members. Okay, team members, yeah. Okay, very cool. All right, that's awesome.